What's up, guys? Welcome back to the second part of the uh, Raz BMC uh, tutorial that we're going to be doing for our Raspberry Pi. Um, what I've done right now, what you're seeing on the screen, is I have gone ahead and uh, connected to my Raspberry Pi via uh, SSH, which we've done in previous videos. So if you don't, know how, if you want to know how to do that, just refer refer back to some of my other videos that I show how to SSH into it. I'm using Putty. So we have SSH'd, SSH'd, ugh, that's a mouthful, successfully to our Raspberry Pi. The, now, what's different, now that you're seeing this screen, what's different about it is because we have a RasBMC installed. So we've got our configuring locals screen. So um, like it says, locals are framework to switch between multiple languages and allow users to use their language, country, characteristics, collection, order, and etc. whatever. So anyway, um, this one is fine, all locals, it's fine with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to load the next configuration screen. It'll take it a minute uh, to process that. As you can see, generating locals, uh, generation complete. So now we should get another screen that I think is the time zone or something, or geographic area. I am in the U.S., so I'm going to arrow up, choose U.S., okay. Um, it's going to ask me what type of... Uh, time zone I'm in, I am in the central time zone, being here in good old Kansas. So now it takes us to just a regular um, command prompt like we've seen before when you SSH to your Raspberry Pi. What we're going to do now is we are going to install the TSOP4856, which what that is, that's what we've been waiting on. Uh, I've been waiting on for a little while. It's a IR receiver. The remotes that I have, you got to check and see what kind of remote you have. The remotes that I have, uh, at least or the one that I'm going to be using, is a 56 kilohertz carrier uh, one. That's the uh, carrier frequency that the IR transmitter uses in this remote. There's 56 and there's 36. Those are both two standards that run around. Um, if you want 36, then you're going to have to use the TSOP uh, 36. Uh, uh, IR receiver, which that's one that I had that you can you can get those locally from Radio Shack. Um, there's a lot of people or a lot of stuff online that refers to it. You can get that locally at, at like I said, at Radio Shack. However, the remote that I used uh, it does not do uh, the 36 kilohertz carrier. It does 56, so I had to order one. So that's okay. I ordered some other stuff, so I just threw it in with the order. So it came in, so that's why I had to split this into two parts is because I didn't have the actual hardware for it. So now I do. So here we go with part two. Um, I'll show you a quick connection diagram. Um, I'll flash it up on the screen now. Okay, guys. All right, here's the deal. We're going to go ahead, now that you've seen that, that's how we've got it hooked up. Um, I've got it, I'm kind of pointing to it here. I've got it all hooked up. I don't know if you can see it, but this is basically it right down here in this corner. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and we're going to stop the normal LIRC uh, process that's going on uh, because we want to debug it. We want to make sure that um, everything got hooked up properly and that it can actually recognize the remote. So what we're going to do is we're going to type uh, sudo mod probe lirc underscore rpi. Okay, and then the next command is going to be sudo kill, and then this is the process we're going to kill, pidof space lircd. That will kill the process. And now what we're going to do is we need to put it into the debugging mode where we can see if uh, we're going to receive the signals from the uh, from the remote. So when I basically once I put in this next command, I'll be able to push buttons on the remote, and you'll be able to see um, you'll be able to see stuff scroll through the uh, through the uh, terminal window here. And if it doesn't, then you you may have made a mistake with your uh, with your hookup. So we're going to type mode two dash D for debug dev LIRC zero and then hit enter. Now that should put it into the mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our remote. For this one, I'm using the Xbox uh, 
original DVD remote, which it's a 56 kilohertz remote. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pushing buttons on it. We should see the pulses. See that? You see it scrolling? It's scrolling right in, right in through here. So as I push a button, so here we go, push. We can see it all scrolling. The space pulse 473, 1018, whatever that is. So our hardware is working. It is now seeing the uh, the IR coming out of coming out of this remote here. So that lets us know that everything is all set up. So now we're going to move on to uh, debugging it. So what we will do is we'll stop right here. And I'm gonna get things reset up to, to start, or not debugging it, start training it. We're gonna train it to the remote. Kind of like you know how you train stuff before, you know, you'll, you'll push buttons on the remote and then it'll learn. This does the same thing. It'll learn the, uh, the IR command. So I'm gonna stop for a second, reset back up, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you the learning process. Okay, we are back and all I did was basically just hit Control C, which uh, gets rid of the, uh, which gets rid of the the deal that we were doing, which gets rid of the, the gets us out of that program, that debug mode. So now what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and set up our LIRC config file. So to do that, what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is since we've already stopped that process and everything, that's what we need to do to start with. We're going to check to see if there's any config files in our home by typing ls. Doesn't look like there's nothing there, which it shouldn't be. If you, this is the first time go, then it's not there. There's no config file, so we're going to create it now. So now what we need to do is, oh, there's a command too. If you want to know all the acceptable um, key labels, and you'll see what I'm talking about later when we go into actually configuring it, um, you've got you got to you got to say like key underscore pause, and then that the, then it recognizes, okay, you're wanting to program the pause key. So then you push whatever button on the remote corresponds to the pause key. So um, if you want to see what that list is, if you type IR record hyphen, and then space hyphen list hyphen name space, and hit enter, you'll get this big long list. And as you can see, you've got button tool pin, button uh, button touch, button try, uh, but the one that we'll be most likely using will be the key. Honestly, I haven't seen a huge difference between key and button. Um, I've, I use key and then whatever whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it be up and, and down and reverse and all that stuff. I haven't seen, I, it works perfectly, at least mine does, works perfectly great using the key uh, commands instead of the BTN or button commands. So anyway, we'll be using the, the key ones for this, for this demo. So anyway, what we wanna do to go ahead and start uh, programming this is we type IR, record, and then dash D, and then dev lirc0 is the directory, and then we want to place our config file in our home directory because that's where the uh, rasbmc looks is in the home directory, so we do a tilde slash, and then we name the file lircd.config. It has to be this name, lirc, lir, lircd, good grief, I can't talk, dot conf. It has to be the file. Otherwise, uh, RASBMC will not recognize the config file. So it has to be this name. And by the way, if you ever want to change this config file, you will just go in, remove it, you know, delete it from your file system, and then just redo this process again, and you can recreate it for a different remote. And I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. So okay, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. You have to follow this to a T. You do everything that it tells you to do. So um, what we're gonna do first, is we are going to hit return to continue. Now, when we uh, once we hit return to continue, let's see, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, now what it says it's going to do is you're going to start pressing buttons on your remote. When you start pressing button, you're going to press each one for approximately one second and move to a different one. What this is going to do is um, like it says, it's going to, each button should generate at least one dot, but in no case more than 10 dots of output. Don't stop pressing buttons until two lines of dots have been generated. Okay, so you're gonna see what this is gonna look like. Basically, it's gonna draw dots across the screen as you press buttons. Like I said, you don't wanna push them rapidly. You don't wanna hold one down the whole time. You wanna push each one for about a second, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and now I'm gonna start pressing each button for approximately a second. And as you can see, there's little dots going across the screen. Now, try not to hit the same button, 
but I mean, if it happens, it's no big deal. Um, but try as many different buttons and see how there's one line. Now there's another line. I'm still pushing buttons. You know, um, once it completes, it'll tell us. Okay, there we go. Now it's complete. So now it's telling us what our signal length is, is 51. Our found possible header is 4,005, 4,007. Basically, it's kind of figured out how this remote uh, communicates, okay? So now the next thing we wanna do is now we're gonna start naming the buttons. So here's where we start typing, like we're gonna type key, oops, this is all caps by the way, key up, okay, enter. And so now it's gonna say press the button for the up key. So now we're gonna get on our remote and we're gonna push the button for up and you push it and hold it down until it, until it brings you to the next line and then it, it learns it. So now we're good. Now we're gonna type key, uh, let's say, down, hit enter, press the down key. Okay, now we're gonna say key left. Okay, we're gonna press the left key until it's done. Okay, key right, and this gets kinda repetitious after a while, push the right button. Okay, now for the, our select button, there is one called key select and BTN select. This is not the one that's actually the selection one. Um, I, it took me a few tries before I figured out which, which uh, uh, title or name, I guess you'd say, um, is. Um, the name for the enter button or the button in the middle of the remote is key enter. That's the one that you're gonna wanna use. And so now you press enter, otherwise you will get, I'm gonna push enter now, otherwise you'll get, um, you'll, you'll get, you'll be able to navigate and move around, but then you won't be able to like actually select anything or push any, any buttons, so kind of annoying. So now we're gonna do key play. So like I said, this is gonna get kind of repetitious, so just bear with me. Play, key forward. <clears throat> we're gonna press the forward button. Now we're gonna do key, um, let's see, I think, it's, I think it's back. Yeah, this is our back button. And it'll tell you, if you type in a word that's not legal, I guess, like if you typed in key blah, in fact, here, let me just do it, key blah, 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 blah. It'll tell you, it'll tell you that key blah, blah, blah is not a, namespace you know it, it, it tells you so you can't mess it up it, it'll tell you that you know that's not a valid name for something so <clears throat> we're going to continue we're going to do key stop and then we'll push the stop key we're going to do key pause we'll do the pause key here and i don't know i think i'm nearing pretty much the end of what i functionality i want and like i said this is purely customizable so kind of whatever you want to do if you want it to have more or less buttons involved you can type uh, if you want to do the numbers down here, which I don't really find a use for, but you can type key underscore and then zero, key underscore one, key underscore two, key underscore three, and those are the buttons. Um, just like I said, do that IR uh, list namespace command and you'll see all the different commands you can do. The last and final one that I want to do is I want to be able to uh, power off the device from my remote. So I'm going to type key power. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this big, this display button, this great big button up here, I'm going to make it my power key. So I'm gonna hold that down and we're good. So now we have finished that. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up here by pressing enter. Okay, now it says checking for toggle bit mass. So what it's wanting you to do is it's wanting you to push a button as fast as you possibly can. So remember your days of playing Nintendo and smashing buttons to try to get something to work or whatever. You know, that's basically what you're gonna do here. So once I press return, I'm gonna press any button. It doesn't matter which one it is. Um, I'm gonna choose the display button, why not? You're gonna push it as fast as you can, as rapidly as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here, and then I'm gonna press it as rapidly as I possibly can. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna do the same thing and draw dots across the screen. Now it's done. It says, no toggle bit mask found, successfully written config file. So now what we need to do now is we're gonna issue a reboot. So we're gonna do a sudo reboot. And then it's gonna reboot the system. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and then we'll come back when we get it all put back together. Okay guys, welcome back. Um, uh, we are now on the actual Raspberry Pi. I've gone ahead and connected a mouse because if, you, if you've uh, fresh installed your Raspberry Pi and you've never, you haven't enabled the, uh, the IR feature, um, then uh, it's not gonna work right off the bat. We gotta enable some stuff and set some settings on the actual X, XBMC uh, page. So that's why I've gone ahead and connected a mouse. And we're gonna go over to uh, Program, and we're gonna click on Raspberry Pi Settings, or RasBMC Settings, excuse me. 
and it takes it a minute and it'll come up. Then we're going to go over to IR Remote. You're going to choose Enable GPIO TSOP IR Receiver because that's exactly what we have. Then down here on Remote Profile, they have some custom or some already pre made profiles. I found that uh, none of them worked. <laughs> they have one that is called. Um, Original Xbox DVD playback remote, but I, I for the life of me couldn't get it to work. I, I, I don't know what was going on. I tried the 36 kilohertz carrier, the 56 kilohertz carrier. Um, it got the 56 one to work because that's what the remote is, but tried it, does not work. So the best thing to do is you scroll all the way through, um, and there's one in here, uh, and, and, and the resolution may not be that great because I've got it plugged in credit where you probably can't read it, but I'll read it to you. It says custom, and then in parentheses it says lircd.config or conf uh, on Pi's home folder. That's exactly what we just did. We created a uh, .conf file uh, on our home directory. So that's exactly what we want. We choose that. So we're going to hit OK, and this will force another reboot. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. We want to uh, reboot. So now the system is going to <clears throat> restart. So we'll give it a second to go ahead and restart. I don't know, I may pause the video. We'll just, we'll see. Um, I may just keep talking. Uh, once this all gets set up, um, you should see in the bottom right hand corner a uh, little kind of tooltip looking thing that'll come up and tell us that uh, it is starting the LIRCD um, uh, stuff. And so that way we know that that, uh, that uh, process is running. So we should be able to use our remote uh, once that process gets up and running. And that's basically what we're going to do. And so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much where you go. So it's fairly fairly easy. Seems kind of complicated. It has a few steps to it. But it's uh, more or less straightforward. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to... Uh, I'm going to now try our remote out is what I'm going to do. So give me a second. I got to get I got to get our remote. Okay, so um, I got our good old trusty remote here. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to give it a shot. Oh, looky there. Oh, looky there. It does work. Files. Ho ho ho. Yes, of course. Run setup. Look at this. I can choose I don't want to choose and add videos. Of course, I've I've since uh, I always try everything. Like I said, I try everything before I before I show you guys. I uh, <clears throat> I, I reinstalled RasBMC so you guys could see from a fresh install how to do this. So I don't have you know last video I created that one folder so I don't have that now. But uh, but basically it works now. I'm gonna try my back button. Push back on it. Yeah, there we go. So I can I can now scroll through it, and even my power button works. If I push if I push power. See, there's my power button, and so I can I can power off the system or whatever I want to do. In fact, I think I just powered it off on accident. Uh, of course, there it goes. Relax and XP restart for the escape command line, uh, and it'll restart. But anyway, that's basically, guys, how to uh, how to do it. So that pretty much concludes. I think I may have one more. Thing we may do with Raspberry Pi, but I think it's going to be down the road. I think we'll start in on some of the other stuff I have going. In fact, the uh, embedded web server stuff I think is what we're going to what we're going to do uh, work with next. Will probably be that. So, um, but I think that down the road, I think we may we may do something else. Plus, also I've got some more exciting exciting things to come. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got uh, um, a project that I've been working on for a friend, a fellow YouTuber that um, I really enjoy. Um, he, uh, he's not involved in electronics, but he's just a great guy. And uh, there's uh, a deal that a project that I've kind of been building. He doesn't know I'm building it, so we got to keep it quiet. That's why I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, you guys will see later. But I'll probably post some videos so you guys can see that all going together and what it, what, what that project's going to look like. And that way, and then maybe maybe you guys can go check him out and and uh, give him some support because he's a great guy. Does really good stuff. Has really good content. Some really funny content on the web. So uh, anyway, it should be enjoyable for everyone. Anyway, that should be pretty much it. That's basically all of the uh, Raspberry Pi stuff I think we're going to possibly do, unless you guys come up with something that you really would like to see. Um, I've had a couple requests for a couple things, um, but if I get enough requests of different things, maybe we'll make some more videos on uh, playing with the Raspberry Pi stuff. But 
until then, um, I pretty much uh, will go ahead and close the book on the Raspberry Pi. This is pretty much the main thing that I wanted the Raspberry Pi for was this XBMC thing, uh, just because I have my own media server. But also, um, uh, I just wanted to wanted to play with one of these. It looked really cool, and you guys are definitely worth it. I can't believe the support. I get subscribers all the time now. It's just it's it's amazing. I can't believe the support from you guys. So. As long as you guys keep liking it, I'm going to keep bringing it to you. So I've even got some thoughts for maybe some other uh, differently uh, kind of formatted videos that you guys might got to get a kick out of, some informational stuff that I'm, I think I may bring to, the, bring to the table, and we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, share, uh, as always. Um, take care and keep on coding. And, folks, that ought to do it. Thank <laughs> you.